Hello and welcome. My name is Reverend Amanda and I'm part of the ministry team here at St Polinus in Crayford. If you know me, hello, good to see you. If you don't, a very warm welcome. Uh, welcome to our gospel reading and reflection for this Sunday, the fifth uh, Sunday of, of Lent. So um, let us begin. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will be my servant also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honour. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So, um, very uh, moving words uh, this morning. I attended a training on unconscious bias. And as part of that, we were looking at our perspective and how we see things and how we see things may have different influences. As part of this training, they showed us a short video clip. Imagine the sunny Italian countryside and a man lying in a field in the sun next to his donkey. A man comes down the road on his lambretta, stops and asks the time. The reclining man turns to his donkey and lifts the donkey's nether regions, turns back and says, 10 past 10. The man on the bike says, are you sure? And the farmer does the same again and confirms, yes. Then the biker adjusts his watch and drives off. Later, the biker returns and he stops again and asks the time. The farmer says, what again? But repeats, lifting the donkey's undercarriage and says 7.15. The biker checks his watch and ex exasperatedly asks, how on earth do you know the time just by touching the donkey there? The farmer replies, Oh, that is easy, lifting the donkey again. I can see on the village clock, and the village clock tower, free, previously obscured by the donkey, is revealed. How we see and know things it is not always as simple as it first seems. So in which way do we know God? Well, we know that uh, we're not able to know God in our human sense of the word as we know each other see each other each day, maybe share a meal, but we can see him through scripture as revealed through Jesus' relationship with the Father. Indeed, Jesus has been described as the revealer and hopefully we can also come to know God through our own relationship with him. In the gospel today, we heard the, the crowd heard in verse 28, the Father witnessed to the Son and Jesus witnessed to the Father. Some thought it was thunder and others an angel. They, as we uh, today, can be encouraged. 
instability of a conviction and be strengthened in persevering uh, in perseverance seeing the personal relationship between the father mediated through the son now the greeks at the start of our reading also reveal their appearance is the signal that the hour has come for the son of man to be glorified and so we come to witness the agony in the garden through the Jonine equivalent of Gethsemane and its turmoil of soul and inner dialogue. But seeing Jesus through John's Gospel is no substitute for knowing Jesus personally, to be open to him and strive for a relationship as a way to the Father. This relationship is open to everyone and John's Gospel offers encounters with Jesus freeing us up from those things that might bring disharmony, anxiety, or hold us back from the true freedom of following Jesus. We see Jesus' complete obedience to the Father. His example is not that we have to submit ourselves to a physical death, but we do have to try and be obedient to God and put him above all else. In this way, we could be seen to die to a life which leads us away from God. A spiritual death, dying to the distractions of this world, we can in fact find life, finding life in God through Christ. We cannot see God, but we can through the example of the agony in the garden, see a man, even though this man is the son of God, and the way. His struggle, his questions, now, someone asked me the other day, what is God thinking with this pandemic? Well, it is OK it, and, and said it is OK to ask questions. And I would suggest that we see Jesus asking questions, revealing his ultimate devotion to God the Father, a way that brings true freedom. And we are free to choose. We see Jesus making a choice. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour, in verse 27. He is not being controlled, he is following. We can also make our choice, and this choice is a universal offer to all people. Jesus is a way to the Father. He overcame the ruler of this world. Jesus' teaching goes beyond words to acts. Now, I've read that there's very little ethics or teaching on how to live in John's Gospel. Although there seems to be an emphatic message, there is a little elaboration. Whereas in the Synoptic Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, Jesus is seen teaching and debating about person and personal and social morality. In John's Gospel, there seems not to be that level of public instruction, rather messages such as, a grain has to die to bear fruit, as we heard today. There's also the revelation that judgment and salvation have come already in the person of Jesus the Christ, and that eternal life is available now to all who believe in him. We are not tied by the expectations and trappings of the world. We have a view beyond this life, which can reveal a very different perspective to our human life. Things may have, that may have seemed important before the coming of Christ are revealed as really very unimportant. I read a comment recently. If a monkey hoarded more bananas than it could eat, while most of the other monkeys starved, scientists would study that monkey to figure out what was wrong with it. When humans do it, we put them on the cover of Forbes. And we, we, we revere them celebrity and power and money these people are put on a pedestal now judas who betrays judas uh, betrays jesus reveals earlier in the chapter his preoccupation with materialism jesus has also refused the word the worldly role of king jesus provokes conflict and division from the beginning with his countercultural approach not seeing the value in things that society value, power, money, and promotion of self. We can be freed from those trappings through Jesus, the highway to God. As we approach Easter, hopefully through Lent, 
we have been able to engage with practices that have deepened our relationship with God, maybe prayer or changing one of our usual habits for God. Through to Easter and beyond, what can we take from this time? To bear witness to the love and longing of God for everyone. Now, we are hoping to be part of a project to bring hope of spring to the community. The plan is for, delay, for displays to be throughout Crayford, but this could be wherever you are. So please pray and reflect on how we may bring the hope and reveal the love of God to all. Amen.